Ankuicho. The president. Le président. Please be seated. Veuillez vous prendre vos places. The court is now in session. During today's sessions and as scheduled, the chamber continues hearing the testimony of witness Comme prévu, nous poursuivons l'interrogatoire du témoin TCW Pan Wan. Pan Wan. Madam Sakolvoti is now instructed to report to the chamber the current Madame status Greffier, of the parties to the proceedings. Good morning, Mr. President. During today's session, all the parties to the proceedings are present, except Mr. Yang Sari, who is present, but in his holding cell due to his health concerns. During today's sessions, starting from the morning, the Chamber continues hearing the testimonies of Mr. Pan Wan, who is now before the Chamber. In the afternoon session, the Chamber continues hearing the testimony of civil party Madame Denise Afonso through remote or video conference. According to the report by the AV Booth officers, the equipment are ready for today and this afternoon session. Judge Lemang, uh, would you wish to continue to bring a few more questions to the witness? You may now proceed. Si vous le souhaitez, vous avez la parole. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. J'aurais quelques Thank brèves you, questions President. encore à poser aux, aux témoins. I have a Donc, few bonjour, Monsieur Kampfan. Good morning, Mr. Um, Kampfan. Je voudrais que nous revenions un tout petit peu sur uh, can, les structures administratives like et sur uh, structures les relations qui pouvaient exister entre le secteur 105 et la région nord-est. Vous avez expliqué que le secteur 105 était, à votre connaissance, un secteur autonome. Pour autant, est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire s'il y avait des relations entre le secteur 105 et la région nord-est there was a connection between Sector 105 and the Northwest Zone. There was some kind of connection through the border. However, when it comes to administrative communication, the report had to be done uh, vertically from bottom up. Alors, je pense qu'il y a peut-être eu une petite erreur de traduction. J'ai entendu, yeah. entendu dans la version française que vous parliez de la, la zone nord-ouest. Il s'agit bien de la zone nord-est. Nord Response. Well, I was Réponse. talking about the south, uh, rather the uh, northeast, indeed. Je parlais en effet du nord-est. Merci. Donc, vous nous dites que euh, toutes les communications entre Thank le you. secteur 105 so et la zone nord-est devaient north suivre had une voie hiérarchique, c'est-à-dire que tout ce que, euh, toutes les communications so devaient passer par, par, qui, par le comité central, who, par le bureau 870, par qui exactement devaient passer ces communications Office 870, Response. According to my understanding, the communication went through 870. But at the same time, there was a committee along the border where the communication could channel through. This committee was set up by the upper echelon, and there were names of individuals in the committee, though I don't remember all the names, but I knew for sure that such committee existed. 
qui était à la tête de la zone, de la région nord-est Est-ce que vous vous en souvenez Taya was the secretary of that zone during the time when I had worked there. Est-ce que vous souvenez de ce qu'il est arrivé à Taya? Est-ce que Taya était également connu comme étant Ne Saran? Was Taya also known under the name of Ne Saran? Response. I am afraid I don't know his other name Je other than Ta Ya because he was popularly Ta-ya. known as Ta Ya at that time. Previously, his wife uh, was somehow connected uh, to Et my mother by marriage, or rather, he, uh, his wife was connected to my mother as she was my mother's cousin and that he was the secretary of the zone. That's all I know. Savez-vous si Taïa a été considéré comme étant un ennemi s'il a été purgé Excuse me, Mr. President. Maître Yanoutsi, puis-je prendre la parole The President, uh, Council, you have already been, uh, rather, ruling was already made yesterday that Council is not allowed to object or to the question put by any member of the bench. You are not allowed to do that, so please be seated. I, I understood. Uh, good morning, everyone. Excuse me. I understood the ruling yesterday that I'm not permitted to object. So I would just like to make an observation that purges, purges are not. The president, no observation is being allowed to make at this moment. Monsieur le témoin, souhaitez-vous que je répète la question Mr. Witness, would you like me to repeat the question or can you remember the Ma question était la suivante. Est-ce que vous savez ce qu'il est advenu de Taïa et éventuellement qui l'a remplacé Possibly who replaced him. Response. Yes, I knew about this because after his disappearance, there was a public announcement concerning this, he was uh, said to have betrayed On a dit qu'il avait, us. Qu'il nous avait trahi. Et pour, pourquoi avait-il trahi Quelles étaient les raisons pour lesquelles, Why selon euh, cette annonce, il était considéré comme Why étant un traître Was there this announcement that he was considered a traitor Response. We heard that uh, he had been affiliated with the Vietnamese. Alors, je voudrais maintenant vous poser une série de questions concernant justement la, la définition, en quelque sorte, des, des ennemis. Et pour cela, je voudrais présenter un certain nombre de documents. Le premier document est le document E3 stroke 1111. E3 bar 1111. ERN en euh, français 00 53 27 06 ERN en Khmer 00 37 66 71 ERN en anglais 00 52 41 92 Ce euh, télégramme 
s'intitule Directive A920. This telegram is headed Advice il est daté du 23 septembre 1976 et, et il est adressé au bien-aimé camarade Chin. Donc, ma première question, c'est il a déjà Chin. été question d'un Chin so dans le débat. Est-ce que vous pouvez confirmer Chin si Chin Chin était le secrétaire de la division Chin 920 was the secretary of division 920. Response. Yes, it is correct. Chen exact. was the, the was the commander of that Chen division. Chen, on était le commandant. Donc voici voici le texte de ce télégramme. So the telegram reads as follows. D'après les informations dont nous disposons, news, les ennemis réformistes. The revisionists. Aussi ce que dans la version anglaise on parle d'ennemis révisionnistes. Et en particulier, le groupe des sept ont eu des échanges entre eux et ont manœuvré pour enfouir des gens qui vont ronger de l'intérieur notre armée et notre base. Parallèlement à cela, ils ont eu des échanges avec certains traîtres pour pouvoir exhorter la population à s'opposer aux coopératives, à s'opposer à notre ligne révolutionnaire et socialiste. En résumé, ils ont manœuvré tout particulièrement pour enfouir durablement ceux qui vont ronger de l'intérieur. C'est la raison pour laquelle il est nécessaire de prendre des mesures comme si après. Petit a. Il est impératif, il est impératif d'endoctriner tous les dirigeants de division pour qu'ils soient informés de l'existence de toutes les ruses des ennemis dont nous parlons. Petit b. Il est impératif de suivre à la trace les éléments qui ont des relations avec le groupe des sept ou ceux qui sont sympathisants du groupe des sept afin d'en faire l'objet de purs. Il ne faut pas leur donner de poste de responsabilité dans l'armée, quel que soit le grade. En ce qui concerne les camarades qui sont des représentants de divisions et qui ont des tâches au sein du comité des relations avec le groupe des sept, il est impératif de les suivre à la trace sur le plan idéologique, sans les lâcher une seule seconde. Et il est nécessaire de changer très souvent de personnel, il ne faut pas garder toujours les mêmes camarades. D'après nos expériences, les gens des méprisables sept, ils ne font que de tenter de séduire notre comité de relations afin de servir leur politique d'envahissement du Cambodge. À certains endroits, ils ont réussi à établir des contacts avec certaines personnes. De ce fait, il faut être vigilant pour qu'ils ne soient pas en mesure de ronger notre armée à aucun prix, et cela depuis les cadres jusqu'aux soldats. En particulier, il est impératif qu'il n'y ait absolument aucune relation avec la division frontalière, signée Kieu, donc supposé qu'il s'agit de, de, de Son Sen, avec copie à Frère 81, Frère Son, Frère Nat, Frère Ren et aux archives. Est-ce que vous avez entendu parler d'un groupe qui s'appelait le groupe des sept Response. No, I haven't. No. I haven't heard anything about the seven group. Alors, je vais lire un autre document. Right. Well, C'est le document E3-1196. ERN en français. 00-59-70-60. ERN en Khmer. 5x0-879. Five zeros. 
ERN en anglais 00 50 66 47. Il s'agit d'un télégramme du télégramme 33 en date du 26 novembre 1976 signé Chan. Alors, éventuellement, une copie de ce document peut être remise. Perhaps, Mr. President, the witness could be given a copy of the document. Donc, le télégramme est signé Chan, adressé au bureau 870. Telegram is signed by Chan and addressed to office 870. Est-ce que vous pouvez identifier qui est Chan? Now, can you tell us who Chan is? Response. I don't know this person Je ne connais pas cette personne très clairement. Est-ce que vous pensez que Chan a un lien avec une personne qui s'appelle Lang There is any connection between Chang and somebody called Lang. Lang, a priori, pourrait être votre père. Perhaps the Lang who is your father was your father. Response. No, I haven't heard non. about this. Mais je n'ai pas entendu parler de cela. Bien, donc on va retirer le document des mains du témoin. In that case, et je vais en donner lecture uh, quand même. The document from the donc, Telegram 33, witness, but I will read it out à l'attention du bureau anyway. 870, bien aimé. Nous vous donnons à rendre compte de la situation dans les bases. Les actions semblables à celles de l'année 74 se sont reproduites. Les gens ont jeté des pierres sur les toits de maisons dans de nombreux endroits. Nous avons vu des gens se déplacer pendant la nuit, mais nous n'avons pas pu leur tirer dessus à temps. Deux, en ce qui concerne la situation des gens de 7, il n'y a pas eu de changement. Nous avons proposé une mesure militaire. Et celle-ci a été unanimement approuvée par la division et les troupes du secteur. Je précise que ce télégramme a été adressé en copie à Bang Nguyen, Bang Nguyen, pardon, il s'agit de Nguyen Chia, Bang Kye, donc a priori Sun Sen, les bureaux et les archives. Alors, passons à un autre document. Like Je précise que ce document vous a été présenté hier par euh, le bureau des coprocureurs et euh, c'est le document E3-877 qui porte les ERN suivants en français 00-28-31-09. En Khmer, 000 513 et en anglais, 00-18-52-26. Il s'agit d'un télégramme adressé par Chan à l'intention du respecté et bien-aimé bureau 870 et hier, vous nous avez dit, sauf erreur de ma part, que ce télégramme de Chan est un télégramme qui avait été envoyé par votre père, à moins que je me trompe. Donc, je propose que nous représentions ce document au témoin, afin qu'il nous dise ce qu'il en est. Alors, nous
Alors, vous vous souvenez de ce télégramme, monsieur Witness, do you remember this telegram Response. During this period, my elder sibling was à cette époque, working at that place. So, to be precise about this person's name, we may aîné, need to talk to my sister because this is the secret name. C'est le nom de code. As Chan could have been another person because my father Chan did not use other name other than Lang. Lang. However, Mais, it was possible that uh, people could have different names because names uh, could be changed from time to time during the Khmer Rouge regime. Les gens changent de nom sous les Khmer Rouge. Alors, s'agissant du contenu de ce document, il y est question de soupçons à l'égard de l'épisable Somme, l'épisable Chin. Et hier, il avait été précisé que Chin, c'était bien le secrétaire de division de la division 920, que ces problèmes ont été rapportés au camarade San. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire qui est le camarade San Response. San was Comrade Chin's successor San at était celui qui Division a au Chin à la Division 920. Et il est dit ensuite ceci, les soldats de l'unité 920 ont progressivement commencé des actions, mais nous les avons arrêtés les uns après les autres. Vous étiez au courant de ce qui s'est passé au niveau de la division 920 Disappear à l'époque, les gens continuaient de disparaître successivement. J'en je, ai entendu parler. Alors, on terminait par un dernier document. Il s'agit du Let's télégramme E3-1030, ERN en français 00623150, ERN en Khmer 00 33 332 en anglais 00 32 48 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 06 du cher Bang, bien aimé, du, du cher Bang Chan, bien aimé. Chan. Donc, cher frère Chan. Brother Chan. Le nom de Sopia, vous dit-il vous, vous dit quelque chose Est-ce que vous Does pouvez nous dire qui pourrait être Sopia Can you tell us who Sopia might be Response. I am not sure which Sopia Je ne suis pas certain uh, the message referred to here because there was a person by the name of Sopi who was in charge of the military at that time at that avait des responsabilités zone. militaires au niveau de la zone à l'époque voilà je vous je vais donner lecture de ce document et vous me direz ce que vous en pensez and then you can tell us what you think je voudrais vous rendre compte de la situation des gens du groupe 7, comme si après. Dans le secteur de O Play, je suis désolé pour la prononciation, ils ont pénétré dans notre territoire à une distance de 20 km 
Puis ils sont venus couper notre bambou. Ensuite, nous les avons attaqués en faisant un certain nombre de morts et de blessés. Donc on explique qu'il y a un certain nombre d'affrontements. On explique au paragraphe 2, les gens du groupe 7 nous ont attaqué à Pic Chenda. En ce moment, on a trouvé leurs traces qui indiquaient qu'ils allaient dans la, dans la, en direction du village de Pou Shri Chas. Est-ce que ces noms, est-ce que le groupe 7, cela vous évoque Now, quelque chose je peux dire que le groupe 7, that's, that's my ce sont peut-être les Vietnamiens. C'est ainsi And que je comprends les choses. Conclude, C'est la conclusion que je puis tirer en m'appuyant sur l'expérience de travail I cannot say exactly sur place. This, uh, group of Cela étant dit, could have been the je ne peux pas affirmer avec certitude uh, qu'il s'agissait des Vietnamiens. Est-ce que, à votre connaissance, les soldats qui, au cours de la lutte révolutionnaire, avaient fait partie de troupes commandées par des Vietnamiens, ont été, par la suite, été considérés comme étant des ennemis I am sorry, I je suis désolé, do not understand je the question. Pas Could you please uh, clarify it? Pourriez-vous préciser? Parmi les soldats, parmi les soldats qui faisaient partie des forces Khmer Rouge, Among the soldiers who il y a eu des soldats Rouge forces, qui avaient autrefois there were été placés sous le commandement who, hiérarchique under, de est-ce que vous avez connaissance de cela ou non Do you have knowledge of that or not? Yes, I do. Um, at the time, oui. uh, there were some soldiers, particularly those who were in uh, Mandulkiri uh, province, uh, they were also uh, working alongside with uh, their uh, Vietnamese counterparts. Et il semblerait que, à partir de 1973, il y ait des accords pour que ces soldats ne soient plus sous le commandement vietnamiens, ils no soient exclusivement sous le commandement Khmer Rouge. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez de ça under the Khmer Rouge. Do you recall this? I recall some of the events. Well, Actually, uh, it was not uh, in the uh, form of en superior réalité, command uh, structure. I mean, uh, it does not mean that the Vietnamese uh, were the uh, superior and we were si uh, following them, but actually we worked uh, with them as uh, counterparts. Uh, but later on, in uh, mid-1975, We were sent uh, to the battlefield Nous along the uh, uh, border, and at that time I was also sent uh, there as well. Uh, I was assisting them in uh, supplying uh, items also or in the, uh, transport or logistics support. Et en quoi cela a-t-il changé les relations avec les Vietnamiens And how did that alter relations with the Vietnamese At first, uh, we cooperated in order to uh, fight against Turkey. Pour lutter Turkey, rather, along the border. 
le long de la frontière. Bien. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le témoin, pour uh, toutes ces réponses. Very well. We wish to thank you, Mr. Witness, for all of your responses. Mr. President, I have no further questions to put. Thank you. President, thank you, Judge. Le Président. Now I hand over Merci, the floor to the defense team for Mr. Nguyen va être donné to put à la défense to the de Nunchea you may proceed. qui pourra interroger ce témoin. Je vous en prie. Thank you, Mr. Merci, President. Merci, Monsieur Again, good morning, everyone. Nouveau, bonjour à tous. And good morning to you, Mr. Witness. Bonjour à vous, Monsieur le témoin. Thank you very much for coming Merci to give your evidence today and this week. Uh, I'm one of the lawyers for Nunchea, along with my colleague, Major Sanarun, and we both have some questions for you today. Um, let me begin by giving you a brief outline of the, of the main areas that I intend to cover. First of all, I'll start with some questions regarding your knowledge of Tassarun, who you spoke about. I'll then move on to what you've told us about the communication structure at K-17 in Sector 105. And finally, time permitting, but uh, I, I don't think we'll have a problem with time, I'll ask you some questions about a variety of other matters, including a few of your experiences prior to 1975. Before I begin with any of that, uh, I would like to first confirm your present address, your current address, I believe you told us it's somewhere in Malay district. district de Malais, and je pense. if you wouldn't mind, could you please tell me again plaît, exactly me where exactly your current residence is located in Cambodia? My current address is in Malai, sub-district, Malai, Malai district, Bante Menche province. Malai, district de Malai, province de Bante Menche. And my house number is 01. J'habite au numéro uh, 1. Psat Prum Street. Psat Rut Psat Prum. Very well, thank you for that. La Défense. Mr. Merci Witness, uh, how long have you lived at Depuis that particular location? Depuis combien de temps résidez-vous à cette adresse? I have lived um, in Malai district dans le district de Malai following the arrival of Ontak. De la Thank you. And prior to the arrival of Ontak, where were you living? Avant de la Pronuc, où habitiez-vous? Prior to the arrival of Untak, I uh, was living in 105 of Street 505, rather. In which town, Mr. Witness? ville, Monsieur le at that time, it was not a downtown area. It was called uh, Corridor 505, uh, but uh, now it was called Moda. And it was the place where uh, Nunjir uh, worked uh, as well. And Pol Pot and Kiel Sampon also had their office over there. Thank you. Is that, is that also in the north? Est-ce que ça West se trouve également part of the country? dans le nord-ouest du pays? It was uh, somewhere along the um, border of Pusat and Korkong province. De la and it was also de uh, et de close to the uh, L'endroit était Prat également province proche of de la province 
Thailandaise de Thank you very much. So just to be absolutely clear, when you talk about the border, you are indeed talking about the border between Cambodia and Thailand, correct? Yes, that is correct. Thank you very much for that preliminary information, Mr. Witness. I'll now move on to those more substantive matters I, I mentioned. Let's start with Sao Sorun. Uh, you've told us uh, over the course of this week that your father, your father was the secretary in charge of office K-17 and that he was succeeded in that position by Ta Sorun. That is, Ta Sorun took over the position following your father's death. Is that correct? Yes, exact. That, that is correct. Thank you. Now, according to one of the statements you gave to the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges, the investigators from that office, you were asked whether you knew about any killings that took place in Sector 105, and you gave the following answer, and I'm quoting now, I'll give the reference in a moment. During my father's era, there was no killing, but during the Ta Sarun era, the arrests of whole families were made, but I don't know where those families were taken to be killed. And before I ask you a question about that, Ms. Williams, just let me, for everyone's benefit, give the reference to the document. That is, and you've seen this document uh, already, Ms. this is E357. It's the written records of an interview with you and the investigators of the OCIJ. It's dated the 10th of March, 2009. And the passage I just read is at English page 6, and that's ERN 00290508, Khmer 00287705, and French 00353104. So again, perhaps I'll just repeat it for you. During my father's era, there was no killing. But during the Tassarun era, the arrests of whole families were made. But I don't know where those families were taken to be killed. So my first question to you, Mr. Witness, is that a correct statement of your evidence? Is that accurate, that during Tassarun's tenure, in Section 105, whole families were arrested and taken somewhere to be killed. That is correct. Effectivement. I did not know the arrest myself, but uh, what I knew was that um, there were arrests of people, and then those people never came. Et and ils ne as for my, during my father's era, Quant à there were only a few père, families who disappeared, uh, like uh, uh, aunt called Chun, Comme par exemple, uh, family la uh, disappeared. Chun but uh, when Ta Sarun uh, came par contre, uh, to take the place of my father, uh, all families père, were um, taken away and they uh, disappear. Des and, uh, this ont été was the ont uh, correct uh, summary of my statement. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Witness. I'm going to move on. I'm going to stay with this topic. I'm going to move on to another document. This document uh, has been put before the chamber. It has an E3 number. It's been used in court already. It's E3-1664. It's a DC CAM document. Document, DC -CAM. That is a document prepared by the Documentation Center of Cambodia. It's entitled Khmer Rouge Purges in the Mondokiri Highlands. Uh, and at the bottom, it refers to a document series of DC CAM. Uh, the document, or the ERN number, excuse me, in Khmer is 00397566 through 00397749. French 
Président, Council, please uh, Maître, repeat the we are an number because you uh, read it rather fast. Uh, it was not followed vite. by the interpreter. Could you please uh, read out uh, rather slowly so that it can be properly rendered? I will indeed. My apologies to the translators. Mes Khmer ERN 00 39 75 66 through 0 0 39 French ERN 00 74 2838 through 00 I'm interested in two particular passages, and I've only got the English ERNs for those. I don't think this entire document has been translated, but I'll read the bit into the record. The first page is English 00397653. Uh, Mr. Witness, I'm going to read a passage to you from this document, and then I'll ask you some questions about those passages. I'm actually going to read you three passages, but I'll do that step by step, one at a time. So again, the first one, I'm quoting now, with Horm's death, Saroun, an ethnic Lao, became secretary of Region 105. The conflict between Kampun and Horm and the installation of Saroun as Region Secretary led to the imposition of stricter rules in the region and coincided with the period of the greatest number of deaths. So my first question, Mr. Witness, can you confirm, can you confirm that Horm was indeed an alias or another name used by your father? Is that correct? Holm was uh, one of the alias of my father. Uh, actually, this name was derived from a Laotian name. Thank you, Mr. Witness. My next question, is it correct, is it correct, according to your knowledge, of course, that the rules imposed in Sector 105 became stricter more strict, plus strict, more harsh, under Saroun's leadership, that is, after de your Saroun, father's death. Autrement dit, après la mort de votre père. That I uh, do not know, because I did not stay rien. in uh, the region Je at that time. Pas dans la but uh, to my understanding, Mais ma uh, those who choses, were at the uh, sector's level had to uh, follow strictly the uh, instructions from the upper authority. They did not dare to make any decision or on their own. That's what I can um, clarify it for you. At that time, everyone were self-disciplined. Thank you. And you've already told us that question. there was an increased number of arrests and, and possibly killings during Saroon's leadership. Would you agree then with this passage that under Saroon's leadership, uh, that that period rather was associated with a greater number of deaths de Saroon, than your father's? Period, that is, than the period in which your father was in charge of Sector 105. To my understanding, I Réponse. actually also learned it from my friends as well that Cela, uh, je appris par following mes amis, the death of my father and during the tenure of Tazarun, many uh, people Saroun, disappeared. De gens ont Thank you. Moving on to the next Merci. passage, je passe au passage and I'm in the same document, Dans le même document. and I'm on the following page in English, en so that's 
And again, Mr. Witness, I'm quoting from this document. Many informants mark the beginning of the most radical changes in Mondokiri to late 1977 and 1978 when Sarun took power. So again, based on your experience, your personal knowledge, what others may have told you, would you agree with that assessment that radical changes took place in Mondokiri after Sarun took control of the sector? I actually uh, witnessed the disappearance of people. I asked uh, en fait, uh, the villagers, for example, uh, where was the uh, family of Mr. A, for example. Uh, then they told uh, me par that uh, they had already disappeared. Que ces gens Thank you very much. Question. And the third and final passage Merci from beaucoup. this same document, passage. the same page that I just mentioned, Mr. Witness, again I'm quoting, after Sarun became the region secretary, they arrested people every day, four or five people a day. The chief of the cooperative tried to intimidate the people to work harder by telling them Sarun was going to kill the lazy people. Now again, if you know, if you know, according to your knowledge or experience, is that an accurate statement of the situation in Sector 105 after Tassarun became the secretary? I tend to disagree with this statement because Je suis en désaccord avec une telle affirmation. Uh, it was not as um, harsh uh, as what it is uh, stated in this uh, because um, uh, they did not actually kill lazy en fait, people as, uh, as being stated. Uh, we can ici. also ask uh, other people who were still who are still alive, uh, those who uh, have come across uh, the experience Des and some of them are now uh, alive and they are Certains living somewhere in a long way. Uh, district. Uh, we may ask them for further clarification, but I do not think uh, that the uh, policy at that time was that harsh. Thank you, Mr. Witness. So just so I understand you clearly, you disagree with the portion indicating that people were killed because they were lazy. Is that correct? That's exact. In my personal Réponse. understanding, I simply do not believe choses, uh, that uh, the, f the only fact that uh, they were lazy uh, was um, the uh, factor for their uh, execution. Uh, of course, at that time, they uh, did kill people, but these Bien were sûr, minor uh, uh, things, and I did not believe that it would amount to the uh, execution of those people. Only those who were alleged of being the enemies, for example, those people were uh, destined ennemis, to be executed, uh, but uh, it was also the decision of the upper authority who uh, passed it down to uh, people at the lower level ensuite, uh, to les carry out the activity. Very well, thank you for that. I, I understand. Question. Yesterday, uh, actually it wasn't yesterday, I believe it was the day before, -hier, me you discussed uh, with the international co-prosecutor a, a so-called 12-point moral code, and I believe en you indicated Comme that you did not recall the specifics of that particular Je code, que vous avez dit but nevertheless, que vous ne vous the, essence, pas de ce code, the essence of the code, I believe, is the how you put it, was to respect people. Vous avez dit que is, th is that correct? Code consistait à respecter les gens. Est -ce exact? Yes, that is correct. Réponse, effectivement. Thank you. And then you went on to indicate, in that Ensuite, same exchange with the international co-prosecutor, you went on to indicate that 
later on vous avez dit in the DK regime, par la suite, sous le régime people deviated from that standard, that is, they didn't follow that standard, and they lived by what you said, uh, what you described, were their own moral codes. Ils ont vécu is that correct? En fonction de leur propre code moral, d'après ce que vous avez dit. Est-ce exact? I don't think I Réponse. have said that. Je ne pense pas avoir dit cela. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Perhaps I'll just Question. read back what we have quoted in the draft transcript, Merci. and then you can correct it for me. Et vous and I'm quoting now Je from the draft trial transcript of page, uh, excuse me, of 11 December. That was two days ago. At page 83, lines 1 through 12. And the question was, can you tell us a little bit about the 12-point moral code that, you had, that had to be adhered to? And the answer was, I do not recall the 12 moral codes, but most important of all was the moral livings in the early days. In the early days, many people supported these 12 moral codes, but later on, everyone was alleged of the enemies in the party, of the party. That's why people did not abide by these moral codes anymore. Of course, the essence of the moral codes was to respect each other in society, pay respect to the Buddhist monks, and so on and so forth, but later on, People did not adhere to these 12 moral codes. They lived by their own moral codes. Now that's what we have in the draft transcript, so please correct me if, if that's not what you said or if that's not accurate. It, is that what I've just read, an accurate reflection of your evidence? Yes, uh, that's what I, I said uh, in court. Uh, it, it was the truth, and I simply would like to give an example concerning the uh, 12 moral codes. During the war era, uh, the 12 moral codes were uh, strictly applied. For example, uh, in Mandolkiri uh, province, uh, people had to uh, pay a great respect les to Buddhist monks, and they must not uh, steal even, not even a uh, piece of chili of the piment. villagers. But, uh, uh, but uh, later on, uh, the uh, Khmer Rouge uh, confiscated Khmer all the belongings of people, they put them into collective use, and people were commun. not very happy with les this uh, practice, uh, so they uh, did faire. not uh, follow Et this uh, 12 moral codes anymore, and they did not moraux. see uh, Buddhist monks uh, anymore uh, either and money or currency were abolished, everything was in a collective form, uh, so they uh, no longer abided by this uh, moral codes. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Question. And would, would you agree, was it the case, that your father adhered to the moral codes, that he tried his best to follow those moral codes in the early days? Of the regime. Au début du régime. Réponse. Actually, uh, during my father's réalité, tenure, he did not père, agree uh, with the practice. Uh, everyone wanted to. Uh, protest, but they uh, they are not uh, do it. Pratique. And at that time, I was uh, too young as well. I did not understand the politics, and I politique. only heard uh, from others uh, what they did. So at that time, uh, all people did not content with uh, this uh, practice, but they, they are not go against pratique, it. So, just so I have you clearly, are you saying? that your father and others didn't, didn't agree with the, with the DK practices, but they still believed in these moral codes you discussed, but they didn't dare to say that. Is, is that what you meant?
Le président, witness, please um, make sure the mic is activated. Veuillez attendre que le micro soit allumé you avant de proceed. parler. Je vous en prie. Man, like, Response. Man. Yes, le it table. is correct. No, we said exact. Everyone did not prefer this uh, policy, but they did not Personne have. Uh, ne préféré. Uh, they were not brave enough to challenge it. Cette politique, mais n'avait pas le courage de la contester. Thank you. Well, what about Tassarun? Would you agree, given what you've told us already about the increased killings under his tenure and the changes that took place during his leadership, would you agree that Tassarun, Sassarun, exercised his leadership in a manner quite different from your father and that perhaps he himself, Sassarun, deviated from those moral codes you told us about. Hold on, Mr. Witness. President, uh, Mr. Witness, please hold on. International Court Prosecutor, you may now proceed. Merci, Mr. President, and bonjour. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Good morning, Mr. Question. It does seem to me invite that this question limite, uh, est à la limite de demander aux témoins de spéculer en C. Il l'a dit tout à l'heure, il n'était pas là sur place. La seule source d'information qu'il a eue, c'était des amis, probablement après, bien après les événements. Donc, il me semble tout de même que la question pousse un peu loin euh, le témoin dans sa recherche d'identifier euh, les pratiques sous euh, Tassaroun, alors que lui-même était à Phnom Penh à l'époque. Voilà, donc je pense qu'il s'agit tout de même d'une question qui invite le le témoin a spéculé pour une bonne part sur ce qui s'est passé lorsqu'il n'était pas là. Mr. President, if I could just respond briefly. I'm not asking the witness to speculate, and perhaps I'll rephrase the question and put it in a more direct way. I would just like to say that all of the witnesses nearly all of the witnesses that have testified in this courtroom have, to some degree or another, given us what we would call hearsay evidence, that is, evidence that of things they saw or heard, or that other people saw or heard, and then told them. So that, as a starting point, would be my first response, that hearsay evidence is not only admissible before this chamber, it's, it's widely used. Uh, second point I would make is that the witness has already told us, based on his experience in talking to people and his own personal experience, at the time, that he does have some knowledge of what happened under Tassarun's tenure. So perhaps uh, I could break up the question because I, I think it was a bit of a compound question. Let me ask you this, Mr. Witness. You've told us about your father, Vous nous avez parlé about your father, père. and how he believed in that moral code that you described, but he wasn't able, unfortunately, to adhere to it. Ce code moral and you've also told us, pas. you've also told Et us vous avez aussi dit about the, the several differences in y avait des the leadership styles or the leadership. Uh, the effects of the leadership, shall we say, of your father and Tassarun. So my question is, let me make it a bit more simple, how would you compare your father and Tassarun? I cannot make a comparison between these two people because I did not stay under the time when Tassarun worked uh, there. I, when hearing that people disappeared, uh, asked some questions from the villagers about this, so it makes it difficult for me to compare the two, leadership, the two people's leadership style. Very well, thank you, Mr. Witness. I'm going to stay with this topic just a little while longer. I'm almost finished with this, my first area. You, you may be aware, you may not, uh, Mr. Witness, that uh, Tassasarun has already testified before this chamber. That is, he's, he sat in the 
the same Donc, chair where you're sitting now and gave us, uh, gave us some testimony, answered some questions by all of us. And he was confronted specifically with Et some of your testimony, some of your OCIJ testimony. And in particular, he was confronted with the bit that you just confirmed for us this morning, that is, when you told us that during my father's era there was no killing, but during the Tassarou era the arrests of whole families were made, but I don't know where those families were taken to be killed. That very portion was put to Mr. Tassarou. And he very clearly rejected your testimony. He rejected it, he denied it, and what he said was, in particular, and I'm quoting, no, no whole family members would ever be arrested. I think the person who stated this, and there he's referring to you, Mr. Witness, must be exaggerating because we never made any arrest of any villager to be executed. So he, Sausserun, has very clearly rejected your testimony in that regard. So my first question to you is, Donc, ça, ça, ça were you in fact exaggerating when you told demander, the investigators from the OCIJ that whole families were arrested during Sausserun's period of leadership? Or, as you've already told us this morning, Ou was your evidence accurate and correct? Comme vous nous l'avez dit ce matin, était-ce exact ce que vous avez dit aux enquêteurs? Response. I did not observe the proceedings during the time when Om Sarun took the stand. But I was, or I am, not in a position to exaggerate. I do not know who gave him orders to arrest people, but I learned that people were arrested and a lot, of new, a lot more people were disappearing. Another person who was a very honest uh, tribal person was also arrested and I couldn't believe that such an honest, honest person like him could disappear and, and some other people were also uh, believed to have uh, disappeared. I do not really implicate him in Je ne pas making mis such arrests, but the arrests uh, were made uh, during his tenure. Alors, and I asked a lot of people tête. about this, and they confirmed that such arrests did happen. Et ils m ils m Thank you for that, Mr. Witness. Do you have any Question. personal knowledge, Merci, any personal knowledge, as to why Sao Sarun would direct. reject that piece of your testimony? Do you think he's attempting to minimize his own responsibilities? vos affirmations. Pensez-vous qu'il essaie de d'atténuer sa propre responsabilité? Don't answer that. Uh... Veuillez attendre avant de répondre, Monsieur le Témoin. Et... The President, uh, International, rather, the lead lawyer for the civil parties, you may now proceed. Council, pick on Mr. President, um, I take issue with this line of questioning because it invited witness to speculate. An international court prosecutor, we noted you were on your feet a moment ago. You may proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. C'était dans le même ordre d'idée. La Chambre a déjà décidé à plusieurs reprises qu'il ne fallait pas poser aux témoins de questions à propos des pensées hypothétiques d'un autre témoin qui n'est pas là. Et, et donc, effectivement, il s'agit d'inviter le témoin à spéculer, à se mettre à la place de quelqu'un d'autre, et ce n'est pas son rôle devant cette Chambre. Merci. I would fully accept that we cannot ask witnesses to speculate as to hypothetical matters. However, I would strongly disagree with the suggestion that a witness cannot know something because someone may have told him that. It's, I know many things because people have told them to me. I don't experience everything in life firsthand through my eyes, through my ears, through my senses. 
much of what we all experience in life comes from our interactions with other people. I think that's obvious. So it may be the case that the witness sitting on the stand knows what I'm talking about, has direct personal information about it, and it may be the case that he doesn't. And he is perfectly able, capable, intelligent enough to tell us that. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that question I just asked. I believe my colleague uh, je pense que mon make a euh, comment, Mr. President. Faire une le President. The President, indeed, uh, oui. I am waiting for your comment to conclude, and uh, that I will then give the floor to another je council, then Council Canavas, you may not proceed. Good morning, Mr. President, good morning, Your Honours, and good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom. Uh, the questions that are being asked are not only relevant, but they're appropriate. And when you look at the manner in which the questions are being asked and how they're framed, they're no different than the questions that were framed by Judge Laverne. I don't think that we're asking the gentleman to speculate. What we're asking the gentleman to do is to make comparisons based on his personal observations and his experiences. Now, it's for the trial chamber to determine at some point what way to give to that evidence. But the gentleman was there. He was able to see what happened before and after certain events or where people were uh, involved in, making, in holding certain positions. And he certainly can draw some conclusions. And I think that's what was being asked. That's what we normally do. And of course, if there's no independent indicia to back up what the gentleman is saying, we'll give it a little weight. But I don't see anything that would uh, that is being asked thus far that we're asking this gentleman to speculate. We're merely asking him to make comparisons based on his observations. And therefore, I think the line of questioning is extremely pertinent, particularly given that he's now being confronted with testimony that was given by the very same witness to which he's being asked uh, to make comparisons to. And I think in fairness to the defense, we should be allowed to explore the same sort of, sort of areas and if the judges avail themselves to ask the sort of questions that uh, we're asking, we should be able to ask those questions as well. Thank you. Allow me to be the president. Counsel for Mr. Nunchia, you are now instructed to rephrase your question. And please be advised that uh, question 
that invites witness to speculate should be avoided. Que les questions invitant les témoins à faire de la spéculation devraient être avoidées. I will certainly do that, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Merci, witness, Mr. President. just uh, to recap what's just happened. Monsieur le témoin. Again, I've told you that Mr. Salsaroun has come into this chamber, has given testimony before this chamber, explicitly denying, rejecting, not accepting a piece of your evidence, which you have confirmed for us today. So my simple question is, do you have any personal knowledge as to why he would do that? Do you have any personal knowledge to indicate that he's attempting to minimize his responsibility before this chamber, as it obviously appears? If you don't, Mr. Witness, if you don't have any personal knowledge, then you can simply tell us, and that's completely acceptable to me. I couldn't expect you to tell us something that you don't know anything about. Witness, I don't know about this. Very well. Thank you for that. Mr. Witness, I have one more question on this topic, the topic of Sao Sarun, and then I'll move on to my next one. Again, just to refresh your, your memory, earlier, not, not very long ago at all, I read three passages to you from a document prepared by DC CAM, and we had a discussion about those passages. Those very passages, those same passages, passages which I should add that you agreed with, either wholly or in part, or in part you did make some qualifications, however, I would say that you generally agreed with them. Those very passages were Donc, put to Mr. Salsaroun, and again, he rejected them outright. And this is what he had to say to the chamber. My answer to this, to hearing those passages, is that the matter is not correct. Those who reported this are exaggerating the facts. I never saw or knew of killings of the people. I deny this statement. When I took power, it lasts only for two months. I was not a strong man who arrested people. I reject what was read out just now. It was accusing me incorrectly. So again, my question would be, do you have any personal knowledge, any personal knowledge as to why Mr. Sassaroon would come into court and reject these passages which relate to his responsibility. Do you know, do you know, and tell us if you don't, that he is attempting to minimize his responsibility before this trial chamber? But, uh, the President, uh, witness, is now instructed not to respond to the question because it was inviting you to speculate. Counsel has already been advised and be cautious when putting questions to the witness. And counsels were asked also not to put questions uh, that inviting such speculation. Thank you, Mr. President. I will move on, but before I do that, I will just say for the record, it was a completely appropriate question. It was framed as a search for information that may be within the witness. The President, you may as well proceed. The questions, again, that are inviting a witness to speculate or provide his or her personal conclusion and not allowed. Thank you. Just to clarify that, did you say personal conclusion? That's what came through on the English translation, that we are not permitted to elicit witnesses' personal conclusions. So my question would be, what else are we doing here? 
the Le president. Président. Indeed, the witness is not expected to speculate. That's all. And this has been the practice all along from the very beginning of this trial. It has been more than one year that we've been adhering to the same practices. Questions that questions by the counsel to the experts may be of those that are for some kind of personal, rather speculation, if you like. On peut poser des questions aux experts qui leur invitent à faire des spéculations. La parole est au procureur. Merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est juste aux fins de transcription et pour qu'il n'y ait pas de, de, de problème de compréhension. La traduction française qui nous a été donnée des propos du Président parlait d'une conclusion hypothétique. Or, cette traduction française est relayée et vient de l'anglais et donc j'imagine que la défense a très bien compris qu'il ne s'agit pas de conclusion personnel, mais apparemment des conclusions hypothétiques. En tout cas, c'est ce que nous avons entendu. Merci. Things are in this chamber a matter of translation. I can assure you it was not a hypothetical question. It was not a request for the witness to speculate. It was simply a request whether or not the witness knew that a particular thing had occurred, whether it was in the witness's knowledge that Salsaroun denied his own, excuse me, minimized his own responsibility here in court, whether that's why he denied all those questions that were put to him about his own role. Again, if the witness doesn't know that, there's nothing I can do about that. And I don't want the witness to speculate. So that's all I have to say. And again, getting back to what you said, Mr. President, about experts, I don't see how that really applies. I wasn't asking for an expert opinion from this witness. I was asking for his personal opinion. The President, Council, you may proceed to other questions, please. You are not allowed to give us instruction or Vous ne pouvez pas donner des instructions à la Chambre ou nous enseigner de faire la leçon. I wouldn't dare, Mr. President. Rien aussi. Je n'oserais pas. I'll move on. Mais je vais passer. To my next structure, to my next question. And these questions, Mr. Witness, relate to K17, Office K17, and its communication structure. Et sa structure de communication. And I'm going to ask you a few questions about what you've told us already. This shouldn't take. Too long. Hopefully, I can finish this segment before the morning coffee break. Yesterday and the day before, you answered some questions by the international co-prosecutor regarding alleged communications between Office K17 and Nunchia, our client, on two issues in particular. Security matters, I believe you said, and invitations to certain meetings in Phnom Penh. And with respect to the second category, with respect to the second category, that is the invitation to the meetings, you have described a certain invitation, a certain invitation that closely preceded your father's death. And just to reorient you, this is, this relates, excuse me, to a discussion that you had yesterday with Judge Laverne, the French judge on the bench. You no doubt heard what I had to say yesterday about that issue. I stand by that position, that it's an irrelevant topic. It's an irrelevant topic, what happened to your father after he arrived in Phnom Penh. However, given that the bench seems to take a particular interest in this, I'm going to ask you just one or two questions about that. The President, uh, Council, you are instructed not to make a lot of comments Mais before putting questions. You may proceed to questions. the questions Posez right away. Please try not to make a lot unnecessary comments that may lead Tâcher to you putting some leading questions because of the comments. The questions should be simple, short, and, and precise. And then 
they must not be repetitive. Éviter les répétitions. Because if the questions are framed in that nature, you will get straightforward response. Si vous posez des questions brèves et précises, vous Thank you, Mr. President. I will just say, for the record, at times it is necessary to set a context for questions. Everybody does that before this chamber. Every single advocate who has been on his or her feet has done. The President, uh, but what we want to hear from you now is putting the question right away. Indeed, you are not given the opportunity here to make any comments. Uh, you have been told that the floor is given to you to put questions to the witness. To tweet, uh, Mr. President, I will do that immediately. Mr. Witness, tout de suite, euh, le Président. You discussed the death of your father with Judge Levin. Vous avez discuté de la mort de son père avec le juge Levin. When le juge that particular nous a episode occurred, quand cela s'était produit, and you told Judge Levin, if I'm not correct, répondu, that you were not quite sure si about the precise date. Pas de la date. So I'd like to refer you, if I may, to one of your statements. J'aimerais donc faire euh, lire une de vos déclarations. And this is another record of one of those interviews that you gave to the investigators of the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges. And this one, in particular, is E357, E357. And again, I believe that's the same one I mentioned already, so I don't need to read out the ERN numbers again. I will refer you strictly to the page, page 6, again, it's the same page that I mentioned before, and you were asked this question, in what year did you come to Phnom Penh with your father, and this is very much in the context of what you told Judge Levin, and you said in late 1977. Now, does that refresh your recollection in any, in any sense as to when you made that allegedly ultimate trip, that is the last trip your father said to have made to Phnom Penh? Could it have been in, or was it in late 1977, as you told the investigators? Response. I stated that I did not remember this quite clearly. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Witness. So, do you not stand by your statement then? Donc, ne, vous ne confirmez pas ce que vous avez dit? Response. Réponse. The statement that I stand by is that I'm not quite sure about that. Mm, je dis que Very je suis well. pas certain. Perhaps we could try to figure it out. You told us that you and your father, or that your father made, made many trips to Phnom Penh, many trips, and that you accompanied him on those, on those trips. Is that correct? He made several trips to Phnom Penh, and you accompanied him each and every time? Response. Réponse. Yes, it is correct. C'est exact. Do you have any idea, do you have any recollection, and again, just tell me if you don't, do you have any recollection as to how many of those trips you made? Was it two or three, was it ten, was it twenty-five, roughly? Can you give us a rough guess, a rough estimation, or if you, perhaps if you remember clearly, how many of those trips did you make to Phnom Penh with your father? Response. Response. I don't remember this. I may Je say I pas. don't know. Thank you. Would it be more than Question. 10 or less than Plus 10? Are you able to say that?
response. Uh, I don't quite understand your question. Are you saying, uh, talking about the frequency of my going with him in a period of one month, Vous one year, pas? or wow. the whole period? No, I'm, I'm just, uh, apologies for not being clear, I'm, I'm still trying to see if we can arrive at a rough estimation as to when that final trip took place. So I'm asking you, did you take more or less than 10 trips in total with your father, if you remember? Response. I may say it was less than 10 times. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will move on now to my second question regarding this alleged invitation to Phnom Penh, the invitation that you discussed with Judge Laverne. Do you know the reason that was given for your father to go on qui ont uh, été donnés à votre père, the le président intérieur, please, um, maître, except je vois que vous abordez un autre it, uh, sujet. Uh, Or, le moment indeed, est venu d'observer une pause. Alors, reprise des débats, we see the audience. Assist uh, the witness Veuillez and his jury counsel during the adjournment and have them return to the courtroom and the next session resumes. We resume at 10 to 11. Uh,